Epidemiology in the Dock, Part 4. Let's look at their model. SAR and SEIR aren't difficult models to understand. They just look scary because they're defined by several equations. The normal distribution is in fact scarier. Its formula really is difficult to understand. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. I received a comment on part one that really rocked my world in both senses of that phrase. Are you surprised that so many epidemiologists ignore Farr's law? I realize it's 180 years old, but is it that difficult to acknowledge something based on data? W.J. Lundy I'd never heard of Farr's law, so I went to Wiki and looked it up. William Farr, CB, 30th November 1807, da-da-da, was a British epidemiologist regarded as one of the founders of medical statistics. It's not a long piece, and this is a key quote. If the latent cause of epidemics cannot be discovered, the mode in which it operates may be investigated. The laws of its action may be determined by observation, as well as the circumstances in which epidemics arise or by which they may be controlled. And he showed that during the smallpox epidemic, a plot of the number of deaths per quarter followed a roughly bell-shaped or normal curve and that recent epidemics of other diseases had followed a similar pattern. The laws of its action may be determined by observation, and a plot of the number of deaths per quarter followed a roughly bell-shaped or normal curve. Here we are, confronted with models which make no sense, which massively exaggerate the real-world experience, and all we've done is look and observe that they look normal. But trolls and critics say it's not official, which should be the least of the issues if it's that obvious that it's occurring. And here we are finding that we're doing no more than a founding epidemiologist, founder of medical statistics, did 200 years ago. When did common sense scientific method indeed go out of the window? Look at what's occurring, come up with a hypothesis and see if it fits. Instead, it's, oh, this model looks nice, never mind the real world, let's stick with this model. I can only trust, hope and pray that airliners are not built using the same scientific method adopted by epidemiologists. Oh, don't worry about fuel in the real world, just chuck a pint in each wing should you get around the world at 25 times the speed of sound, no problem. What was that crashing noise? So thank you, W.J. Lundy. Every comment keeps me sane, else I'd be sat here knowing this, seeing this, only I'd have done far less and just been far more stuck, despairing and angry. It's just that here we are debunking epidemiology and it isn't fun. It's not a thrill. It's deeply depressing. Science is supposed to be an anchor of progress, not the lead weight that sinks democracy and traps us in our homes. The SIR, SEIR family of models may be mathematical, but they're not science, or rather their use isn't science, but fantasy, and a very dangerous and harmful fantasy. If you want to believe that the moment a virus touches a human, then the infection of every human in the population is inevitable, fine, it's a free world. If you're the scientist advising the government and you say that and they believe you, that's not so fine. That's our lives you're now playing with, and yet that's precisely what's happened. So let's look at the SIR model as a simpler form than the SEIR, and we can then add the E for exposed. And in fact, let's take a look at the simplest model, SI for susceptible and infected, and work up from there. As always, I get that some people think they're not good at maths and numbers, but I assure you, you have all the mental skills necessary to understand this once you get past the shorthand. Am I not immune? I didn't look at these models beyond seeing their output and reading their description, also because of their complex series of equations, until I realised, hang on, this is just daily cases versus total cases. So let's understand first and then do shorthand later. So, inventing an example, you have a jar of cookies, a family of four, and you want to know how long your cookies will last, so you can plan the shopping trip and your schedule won't be overwhelmed. Crisis stuff, huh? But yeah, take out the drama, it's all the same stuff. Now, how would you do that in real life? Count the cookies, estimate how many your family eats in a day, 
Divide the number of cookies by the number you eat in a day and hey presto, starting to sound familiar? Why bother with a complicated way of looking at it when you've got a much simpler way that's perfectly good enough? So, count the cookies. 100. Watch your family scoffing. 25 a day. Cookies divided by cookies per day equals 100 over 25 equals 4 days. That's it. Not rocket science. Now let's introduce you to the way that epidemiologists would do it, using differentials. And yes, guess what? You're already familiar with these. What do we call the change of distance over time? Speed. What do we call the change of speed over time? Acceleration. Do the words speed and acceleration freak you out? What is the change of distance? It is the difference, D, of distance, capital D, and believe it or not, we actually use S, God knows why. Delta D for short. What is the time period or difference in time? DT or delta T for short. What is miles per hour? MPH, freak you out. Miles per hour, miles over hour hours. 30 miles in 2 hours, 30 over 2 equals 15 miles per hour, m over h aka mph. It's just notation and expressing it as differences. d difference in distance equals 30 miles, d difference in time equals 2 hours. d difference in distance equals 30 miles, d difference in time equals 2 hours. We can rewrite as d difference in miles equals 30. D difference in hours equals 2. So miles per hour equals 30 divided by 2. dm per dh equals 30 over 2. It's just notation. dm per dh equals 30 over 2. dm per dh equals 30 over 2 equals 15. mph equals 30 over 2 equals 15. Notation. Can maths get complicated? Sure, so can computer programming or raising a child or predicting who's going to win the Super Bowl or deciding what stocks to buy. But some things aren't complicated. Never trust a politician. Always check what a scientist claims. Trust your instinct. Don't do what someone says just because they tell you to. How did these basic rules of life get utterly disregarded? because when you trigger someone's fear response, they quite literally are no longer thinking. And when 90% of people are pack animals, not independent observers, they're already conditioned to do what the pack alpha says. So if you're wondering why you can't get through to people, it's because they're not wired like you. 99% of you at least. Trolls are them, not you. You're an independent observer. They're pack animals. That's why they get so angry when you challenge their view. You're challenging their pack leader, their pack. They don't even know that's what they are, because we're all brought up on democracy and the land of the free. No, it's the land of the pack and the pack leader tells the pack what to think, and every four years the illusion of choice is provided, red or blue this time, and then the red or blue leader tells them what to think. Maybe, when it's not a life-threatening issue, there's some illusion of independence. But the moment the pack is threatened, wham, DNA kicks in and you find out in a split second if you're an independent observer or a pack animal. 99% odds are you're an independent observer, of those liking and commenting at least. So yes, neither the situation nor the maths is hard, not at all. Normal distributions, actually the maths behind them, are far harder. They're complex formulae. These aren't. It's just arithmetic. Seriously. And even I was scared off by the shorthand. Freaky, huh? Well, not anymore. So very quickly, let's invent a model of our own. Cookies, pack of 100, 25 a day, 4 days. Done, but far too easy. Let's model it. So we can justify you going out shopping, when you should be putting up the new shelves or reading to the kids. What have we got? Well, we've got our stock of cookies, so there's an S, convenient. What's going to change and why? Well, the stock of cookies is going to go down. Go figure. No, really, it is. So, go down. Is that increasing or decreasing? Down, negative, so we know it's going to be stock is negative. As our sanity check, stock going down, so really it's change in stock 
is going to be negative. So is that change in stock depending what color you're wearing or change in stock based on what TV channel you're watching? Maybe you could do those, but no, we're going to do the obvious change in stock over time. So D, difference in stock over difference in time, and we'll measure or count the differences in units of cookies, number of cookies or just cookies, and in units of time, and we'll go with days for convenience. That's a really important concept, by the way, which I've never really paid attention to, but it's about the dimensions of your result. Miles per hour makes sense. We can go a distance and it takes time. So how much distance over how much time? Sensible. Which of these makes sense? Cars per plant, the green kind, or cars per plant, the factory? Same words, but only one of those realistically has any bearing on the real world. Now it could be anything. Green fly per plant, the green kind. Green fly, green fly per plant, factory. Now which makes sense? Or finally, workers per plant, the green kind. Workers per plant, factory. Now which makes sense? The first two had only one realistically that made sense, and who would care about the one that made sense? Cars per plant, factory, would be important perhaps to someone planning parking. Cars per plant, green kind, uh, you are not so much. Green fly per plant, green kind, very important to gardeners, I presume, and of great interest to us at school, where the school salads were infested. Yep, private education, huh? Privileged. Green fly per plant, factory, uh, maybe, I guess, not really. Workers per plant, green, well, sure, drug dealers, farmers, easy to see how that could apply. Workers per plant, factory, also sure, any boss, manager, CEO, investor. The plant in question is different, so they're different quantities being measured. But sure, it could make sense to measure them. So cookies per hour make sense, as does cookies per day or cookies per week. They're all quantity over time, and we're used to things like that. Cookies per sweater, cookies per show, cookies per water, cookies per person. Aha! Uh -huh. Cookies per sweater, cookies per water. You what? Though, how many cookies before I need a drink of water? Yeah, that could work. Cookies per show, cookies per person. Sure, we do that kind of calculation all the time. You see, you are a maths expert, a scientific expert, a skilled analyst, because you do this stuff all the time. And you're so expert, most of the time, you don't even need a calculator or a spreadsheet. Hey, grab another pack. We could get thirsty. Excellent analysis. Good call. And if the US or UK or Canadian populations hadn't been scared by fight or flight and instantly transformed into blind pack mode, Pac-Man? Good name for a game. Someone should do something like that. That level of testing is all that would have been needed. 3085 deaths in Hubei, 0.2% death risk under 40. Done. So D difference in stock of cookies per unit time in days, aka a day, DS in cookies, DT in days, cookies per day. Do you think you could estimate how many cookies your family go through in a day? Is that too much? I didn't think so. So the stock of cookies goes down by what? 24 a day. DS by DT equals minus 24. Gosh, how tough was that? Yep, it really is that simple. DS by DT equals minus 24. Now, why did the cookies go down 24? Well, is it always 24? Yeah, not really, but on average, I'd say 24. See, you're already a statistician. Maybe 20, maybe 28, unlikely to be less than 16 or more than 32. I'd call that normal. And you know normal distributions. Seriously, just because we can use shorthand and have some guides as to how to work things out, so do you. You have a supercomputer in your head more powerful than any conceivable computer because it's not in your head. But that's another story. Even the one in your head dwarfs the capacity of any array of computers or quantum computer that's going to be around for a very long time. Which makes it scary that it's so easily switched off, but hey. So, Delta stock, change in stock over delta time, change in time, ds by dt equals 24. Actually, minus 24, but don't let me forget. But why 24? Well, there's four of you, roll with it, and eat. you eat six cookies a day. Yeah, I know, it's really like 24 each, well, for me at least. 
So how do we express that? Man, I need a cookie. Mum, pass me a cookie. Dad, stop marking the cookies. No, uh, not precisely what I had in mind. There's four of you, so F family equals four. It could be people equals four or whatever letter is convenient. And you eat each exactly six a day on average in our tidy little epidemiological world, which is really messed up as yet another issue revealed itself yesterday and another this morning. But hey, so family equals four and each person eats six cookies per day. So we already have that delta cookies per del today equals dc by dt equals six. Difference in cookies per unit time here a day. So that's our first difference rule and it covers one person's rate of eating cookies. So our difference rule is expressed as an equation is delta cookies by delta t equals six. And all it says is that someone eats six cookies a day or six CPD. It's good to know. And the key thing is, and I hope I've nailed it, is that you'll never be scared of a weird equation again. Certainly just because it's ds by dt equals gobbledygook. It's just, aha, so how does the s something change over time? Got it. Cases per day, new cases, c dot n, we've been dealing with that for two months now. And dc by dt equals cn. Don't fold on me now dc by dt equals cn. The difference in cases per unit time is the new cases. So total cases equals yesterday's total cases plus today's new cases. You knew that, but did the equation freak you out? It's just shorthand. If in doubt, think it out. Distance, speed, acceleration. Speed equals change in distance over time. Acceleration equals change in speed over time. Speed v equals delta distance ds over delta t. And yes, speed is v, distance is s. Fucked up, but you get the idea. Distance s, ds by dt equals speed. Difference in distance over difference in time. dv by dt equals acceleration. Difference in velocity over difference in time shorthand. So ds by dt equals minus 24. Why? Because ds by dt equals minus fe and we're back in cookie land. ds by dt, the stock of cookies over the stock of time, equals minus fe. Family of four eating six each per day. That's the stock of cookies going down by four by six equals 24 and going down means it's minus. So ds by dt equals minus fe equals minus 4 times 6 equals minus 24. Congratulations, you just invented your first statistical model. Now go show it to a politician and get us out of lockdown. And hey, that'll do for now. Next time we'll actually start to look at their versions, the ones that have done so much damage. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.